Hey, everybody. So this is the special edition follow-up to episode 23, where we are discussing our most recent playthrough of Twilight Imperium 3 with both expansions. I'm your host, Adrian. I'm your host, Zach. And I'm Jeff. And so, yeah, we played, uh, as discussed in episode 23, we played (laughs) Twilight Imperium 3rd edition this most recent Saturday, December the 3rd. And uh, we played a six-player game with both expansions, and we played with all of the modules except for Space Mines. Uh, right? And it only took 11 and a half hours. 11 and a half hours. Started at 10 a.m.? No, we met at 10. Well, we did not, that we the didn't 11, and 11 hours is included in that. Yes, oh, okay. it is. From, from uh, build up to take down was Arrival. Not like yes. From arrival to departure was 11 and a half hours. Yep. Um, the original plan was for everybody to be here by 10 so that we could start playing by 11. Realistically, everyone wasn't here until like 11 ish. 10 10. 10 45. No. no. We, they got Nick, here right Nick after was, No, Nick was way late. Oh, he was here 10 30 ish. But we didn't need him. Yeah. We, we well, also, we did not start setting up until like 10 30 or something yeah. like that. So. Yeah. Um, we also, for this one, did a bunch of video and audio recording. Um, to hopefully maybe put out a kind of a let's play YouTube video, um, which maybe I'll take some audio from this episode to cut into that if I need more audio. Maybe. To go with all the time-lapse video of the 11 and a half hour game that oh, we played. It was a long, uh, long day. There, there were a few breaks. Like I said, we, were, we had another camera set up in the other room where people would go to discuss strategies and like their plans and stuff to the camera, kind of, you know, reality TV style. Uh, we took a nice little lunch break that was probably, I don't know, 30 to an hour total. And, uh, there were a couple of big rule breaks where we were looking up rules and discussing mm-hmm. slash arguing slash fighting about rules. Um, there were emotions. There were so many emotions. Well, that's what the game does. <laughs> uh, so I guess to get, I, to get into this one, I guess we can talk about what everybody was, who was yeah. playing, what they were. Uh, so first off, uh, well, we were all, well, sorry, I was neighbors with both of you guys, so we were all right next to each other. Yes. Yes, the three of us. Zach was the middle yep. of the three of us. I was the Emirates of Hakan, a.k.a. the Space Cat Merchant. Yes. The Kilrathi. Yep. Which I'm curious for any listeners who play Twilight Imperium, how do you pronounce that? Because I feel it should be Emirates of Hassan. Either way, it works. Hakan. I, I you just, can pronounce I'm just it. Curious what our listeners there's think. An, uh, yeah, there's apparent. There's no official of organization, so. so there is for the Lazix and other ones, but not that one. So. Ah, weird. Um, because Lazix was in the trailer or something like that. Oh, gotcha. yeah. okay. Jeff, there's canon behind yeah. it. <laughs> uh, I was the Winu, which were the steward race of the previous yep. space stewards. Yeah. Uh, yep, space stewards, uh, also known as the uh, politics, the race. Uh, <laughs> yep. I've played as those twi- them twice before, and I won each time. So I really love that race. I didn't win this time. No. <laughs> no. I was the Ghosts of Creus. Yeah. This was my second or third time playing them. Mm-hmm. They are definitely my favorite race. I, they, I hate playing against them. They're really annoying. Wormholes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wormholes the race. Yes. <laughs> They we are, need to take wormholes off a lot as as many as we can off the map whenever we play with them. <laughs> there, uh, there were some domain counters that had come yeah. up wormholes, which there almost always are. But they were unusually close. I mean, it wouldn't have mattered even if we had had no wormholes on the map with my racial tech and my gravity drive. I still could have reached anywhere on the map pretty easily. Well, yeah, but we could at least block you in ways easier yes. versus if there's like near Bob's thing, there were three or four B wormholes or a wormholes right next to him. And it's just yeah. like, what the fuck am I supposed to do with that? Yeah. So the ghosts, um, in lo- in the aftermath of this game, I spent a bit of time researching things about the ghosts, mm-hmm. uh, came up with some definitive answers to, mm-hmm. uh, some things that we'll discuss here in a little bit. But, uh, ultimately it seems like their only benefit is wormholes. Yeah. Like, like they can utilize wormholes very effectively. Um, so an effective counter to that is to control the wormholes yourselves, not just don't let them get to wormholes. Yeah. Uh, and you can delay them enough. Like, eventually, you, you can't stop them because one of the racial techs lets them make A and B wormholes wherever they want. Um, and they can use A and Bs as each other. Yep. So once they get that racial tech, 
then you then you can't stop them. But if you can delay them from accessing wormholes long enough, I feel you can put them in a severe. I've only won with them once. Have you I've played won against other them? I don't think I've played against them. Okay, so that's why you are still favorable towards them. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Actually, no, I think I did play against them once, but it was a new player who I don't think fully grasped the power of nope. the wormhole. Uh, the one thing I did like about this map that we played, uh, which, by the way, we are playing the Octra Cosmos map. It's Octra? Octra Cosmos map. Uh, it's a map that's available on Board Game Geek. Um, a BGG user whose name I did not write down. Uh, uh, Logic Man. Logic Man. Up. Uh, Loaded three different maps, five, six, and seven player maps that uh, are supposedly pretty well balanced. The interesting thing about this one, we had not played it before. It had three Omega wormholes, which in theory, like, so one of the things that the ghosts can do is prevent people from using A and B wormholes to enter a system they control. Uh, With those Omega ones, those don't count. So you can still enter. That's why whenever... Whenever we make a uh, our own map, if the ghosts are in there, we make sure Malice gets a, a the sea, wormhole. Yeah. Nexus gets a sea wormhole, and uh, it goes at least one or two other places, just so they can't. Because if it was only A or B, as soon as they're in there, we can't do anything about it. Yeah, Locked you can. Down. You can never. Like all you have to do is leave like one destroyer and one ground troop. You don't even need the ground troop. Yep. One destroyer sitting in there, and you can never take it. They have a permanent three two pol- politics. The nice thing is, is Malice, and I think this is part of the balance of Malice, it does not have any production. Um, but with some of those expansions and being able to build production onto a planet, mm-hmm. it would be insane. You need to have another wormhole into there. Yep. Whether you make a custom one on a piece of paper or... <laughs> yes. Tokens from other games. Which, yes. which we did for this one, <laughs> because the yeah. Omega ones that were on this Octocosmos or Octocosmos, does it, we couldn't find... I don't know if they're... He just made that up. Or if those are pieces that are in a different version of know. one of the expansions, yeah. or mm-hmm. I don't know. But yeah. so we just found three, yeah. three tokens from a different yeah. game and threw them on there. Yeah. So my my Hakan guys, they just they make they make money. So that's what that's what I did. Trade, trade, yep. trade, make trade. Money. Space traders, the game. Yep. Um, we played with three other players: our good friends David, Bob, and Lavolo. Nick. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we know a lot of Nicks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, Trust me, the other Nick that we know would not play this game at all. (laughs) That's just true. Um, David was the Barony of Letniv, Space Vampires. Vampires. Nick was the, what's that race called? Mentac Coalition. Space Space Pirates. Space Pirates, Pirates. yep. I I knew what we call them. I couldn't remember their actual name. (laughs) And Bob was the Universities of Joel Nar Space Scientists. Space Nerds. Yeah. Space Nerds. Bad at combat. So yeah, uh, in case you hadn't noticed, we have names for pretty much every race that uh, revolve around space. Blank. Uh, the Federation of Soul are space humans. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, uh, we probably have a combined total of eighteen plus plays between mm-hmm. the, all three of us here. Uh, you people all played together, and I played separate games. So twelve separate total games, yes. probably at least. Yeah, this was your first time uh, getting with to play us. with us. All of you people, all of <laughs> us. Uh, whereas I am pretty sure I have never played without Zach. In I haven't. Game. No, son of a bitch. Yep. Um, what are you guys' win rates at Twilight Imperium? I've ha- won now two, maybe three times. I've won two or three times as well. I have played so far in the distant past. I do not recall at all. Okay. Who won or lost? Usually it's always tight. So it's yeah. never, uh, any time that I won, it was that. I remember seeing someone who was like, uh, they got to 10 and everybody else was like at six. But yeah, it was one of our early games. I'm curious with the revelation of the new rule where winning it goes in turn order. I mean, technically it was always a rule. Bob just doesn't no, like that No, they said the way. revelation of the rule. Like, I, did, I oh. didn't know that was oh, the I, rule. So I, I knew that rule. I, I did, too. And then when we were going at the end, and it's like, oh, a tie. And I was like, I was like no, that's not a thing, because you can't tie. There's no tiebreaker in this game. Yeah. So I'm curious there now. There is a if fucking there's winner. <laughs> been other times where we've scored where somebody's like got 11 and somebody got 10. And, yeah. and somebody won because they had more points, yeah. which isn't the way you do it at all. It's, no, it's the first, the first one to hit. To 10 it's, it's a first. race. It's yeah. a race, not uh, who gets the most points. Yeah. So. 
Uh, so I don't know if that's affected any, if that would have affected any games. That I don't we think played. so. I can't I, think of any off. I mean, the only thing I think is be like, oh, I need to be like, I need to get the one strategy. I'll still win with that, but I need to be on that turn order first because mm-hmm. I'll hit ten before he hits ten. Yeah. No. Um. So, like I said, we we did a preset map. Yep. We did all of the. We did a selection of strategies. Yep. Uh, hand bespoke selected. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yes. Uh, which, for those of you familiar with the game, you might recognize some of these. Jeff, you want to read through them? Uh, we did leadership for number one. We did diplomacy for number two, which is from the base set. Which is a bullshit card. <laughs> we did assembly two. The other two is not any better. Uh, yeah, they all suck. That um, one's a demilitary, demilitarized zone. Yeah. So, yeah. For number three, we did assembly two. For number four, we did production. Five, we did trade three, which has the mercenaries. For six, we did warfare two. Seven tech two and eight industry. Uh, so and these are pretty vital for how your game's going to play. Yeah, your so, your game completely changes based on these strategies. A lot of these are common to at least the ones that Zach and I have played. A lot of these are the ones we use most every time. At least six of them we've we've played with every time. Uh, the trade one changed a little bit. We we've played some without mercenaries, so we use the other ones. Uh, sometimes six will change the warfare one, and sometimes two will change. But yeah, usually. The one, three, uh, four, and eight, all, seven and eight always stay the same. Yeah. So. I uh, had played mostly without the expansions, mm-hmm. uh, but we did use the strategies from the expansions. Okay, good. You didn't play with the Imperial strategy bullshit? As soon as that, it, like whatever Imperial replacement was, that's the one that always took yes. at least. Yeah. Yeah. So Because it's funny, um, apparently the main strategy to do in the base game was take one, which gets you initiative, which will allow you to then take eight, which will get you those two points. Yep. <laughs> That's basically how it was like. Uh, Guaranteed it, two points is yep. critical. Exactly. You're, and then they switched one to where it was like one point. And or then, something else. Yes. And then uh, and then so we, we did not take any of those because we didn't. Also, we took out the public strategy or the, the public objective of, oh, the game's over. Whoever wins, wins. <laughs> yep. That one was so bullshit. <laughs> yeah. My fan's getting a little out of control. Gotcha. Um, you know, I, I feel like a few of those are, are nearly mandatory, at least the way our group likes to play. More and more, I think, especially now that we've we've played with mercenaries almost every time we've played recently. So, obviously, that trade. Plus, that's just the... That's the more interesting trade, I think, for people... For keeping the game close and even. Because no matter what, at the, like, basically the way that one plays, when trade gets activated, you make trade agreements... Then everyone gets trade goods based on their trade agreements. So nobody's getting left out because their trade got broken. You mm-hmm. know, we'd played with that, that one before where you get money for your trade agreements, then you make new ones. And that's one where like breaking trade agreements, when you play with that trade, that's, a, that's an act of war. Well, and then it's also whoever doesn't take that one, everyone gets one less trade. Yeah. So if you, have, if you only have two ones, it's every time it happens, you just get one trade good. Whereas like the con, like I, you know, I get three on each of mine, so I'll usually get that this, another three or a two, and so I always make five to six. Yeah. And then uh, micro tech is really easy, so that's seven or eight each time, and it's just. I went pretty hard trade. Yeah. On mine too. Yeah. Those um, resources are nice. They are. Yeah. Uh, so the first couple rounds of the game were pretty low key. Not a lot happened, which isn't uncommon. Some could argue that the whole game was pretty low key. <laughs> Combat wise, maybe. Combat wise, yes. But like I said, that's sort of how our game. Like usually, it's it's very Cold War ish in our games. Especially, like so, our early games weren't. Like we learned the hard way that if you go all out fighting, you'll lose. Like so, we've so it's become almost more of like Cold War is a great example. Like little bits of testing here and there, and then like you know trying to get proxy wars. Like hey Jeff. Attack Zach. Mm-hmm. Okay. You should attack Zach. No, uh, literally, I've had multiple <laughs> games. It is, it, and it's one of my favorite things. Is I'll have, I'll do, so, I'll convince someone that the logical move is for you to attack Adrian, and then Adrian will get pissed off at you, and you guys start fighting. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and then I did that. I did that once with uh, someone, and then they're. Uh, I was like, you should, the best thing you should do is attack Bob. And then he was just like, all right, I'm, I'm coming with you. And then he goes, and Zach, I'm coming after you next because I know you started this shit. And I was like, damn it. <laughs> um, I, I, I believe one time I saw that even turn against you where 
both players, I think, because I think it was me, and it was like the third time you'd done it to me. And like, I did one battle with the person. I was like, wait, why are we fighting? <laughs> Zach instigated this. And then we both turned on you. Yep. So, yeah. Um, it is definitely the case in this game that you war is important. Having a strong fleet, if for no other reason than deterrent, is important. But you don't want to be fighting all the time. You want to pick and choose your battles, and there will be a handful of opportunities for you to make one big push and succeed yeah. or fail. That can make or break your game. So I think a lot of it, too, is based on the public objectives and the secret objectives. Yes. Because a lot of our public objectives, they weren't really... Combat focus. Combat None focus. of them were. Well, there's one. The, the, the three, but it, not, not, three it didn't come up for a little while, though. No. It wasn't an early one. Yeah. Uh, and then that one's hard. Like, there were a lot of times I was looking around like, all right. And it was like, well, that's two ships. That's two ships. That's two ships. That's six ships. That's <laughs> seven <laughs> ships. That's eight ships. Yeah. <laughs> like, there was never just three. And if they were three, it was like... That's three dreadnoughts. That's two dreadnoughts and a flagship. That's a I, carrier I found, carrying <laughs> six fighters and two dreadnoughts. I, I found I found a place that had three ships that I could kill. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, you did. Uh, that was when the the turn. Yep. Of the traitor Zach, who had never really allied to you at all no. at any point in that game. I mean, I gave you. I I think so we'd the, been trade partners. So I think the one problem with the means five. Nothing. The, the 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 trade that we use is that because you establish and then you do you you establish trades and then you get money for it it's breaking trades don't mean anything no because it's like oh i'm gonna attack you and then whereas if it's like you get your money then you trade then it's just like well fuck i have to do this but i'm gonna lose you know three or four trade well, goods while doing that so it doesn't tend to hurt you because you being well and by you in this one it doesn't hurt the emirates of hassan uh -huh. Or Hakan or whatever. It doesn't hurt the Emirates because they are space carrying space cat merchants. Did the space the space cat merchants. Space because, Klingons. Because they are cat Klingons. Because they <laughs> <laughs> Because they're carrying both of their trade agreements are threes. Mm -hmm. So it's not like somebody's not going to trade with you. Yeah. Whereas like if the space pirates, for instance, if you had a trade agreement with them because like just the way trades worked out, you're like, oh, three to one, that's all that's left, I'll take that. And then they attack you and break that trade agreement, you might be like, no, fuck you, you're not getting my three anymore. Yep. You know, so it gives you it gives you leverage. Oh, that, I know, yeah, yeah, exactly. With that particular trade. Yep. Um, yeah, so I'm torn. Like I said, I, I think that it overall leads to a more balanced thing because pretty much everybody's getting trade goods every turn. But the nice thing about the other trade is, like I mentioned, breaking trade agreements in that are like, Oh yeah, mega acts of war. Like even if you break them not in combat, like if you break somebody else's, like oh, I'm gonna break your guys' trade agreement, then both those players are like, oh fuck you're you're costing you. me, you're yeah. like you're hurting me now. Yeah, like, fuck that. Whereas this one, the secondary action is spend a, a strategy allocation to break any trade agreement. Well, so and it, just everybody yeah. kind of does it and is like, all right, I get a trade. Yeah, uh, that one that you're talking about, it's you know you can establish or you get money and then you establish trade partners or you just break all of them. Everything's so, breaking. Everything's broken. But what I love... Um, Go back to zero. Yeah. So that can really frustrate people. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, well, but then I also like that it's... You have to... Any trade agreements you do have to be approved by the person holding trade. So they're like, I want a good deal out of this or no one's getting any trades. Yeah. Unless you're the Hakan and you're just like, I don't give a shit what you say. I'm just going to trade with you and I'm going to trade with you. Yeah. Well, uh, which there was something in the fact that... Yeah, there are uh, them a little bit. Yes, because it used to be how it reads on the card is unless you fight them, you uh, you declare one of them, you can't break a trade agreement with them. Yeah, which isn't quite accurate. Yes, uh, but also there's no reason for you to unless you're attack attack the Hakan. There's no reason for you to break the trade because you're getting three money out of it. Yeah, so exactly. Um, the so yeah, the first couple of rounds were pretty low key, uh, at least in terms of combat and major contention. There's some political posturing, but. I don't think any of the early ones. When when the did first, when did the big one? Well, it was the first major law was wow. the um, I believe it was Jeff proposed uh, the checks. Was it checks and balances? That no, that one came up later. Okay, well, the first one that got proposed was the polit one a political. Yeah, it, uh, after you resolve one vote, you immediately get to, resolve another. Immediately resolve another vote. Which I can't remember what that was called. Something like bureaucratic necessity or something. Necessary bureaucracy. There it is. Yep. Every country needs it. <laughs> yeah. And so that 
I believe is another card that I I don't I'm I'm okay if I never play with that card again. <laughs> See, like so, it's not one unlike the one that just ends the game. I wouldn't want to take that one out. I think it's fine being in there and just occasionally coming up because it drastically affected this game. No, yeah, this one definitely played different than our previous ones. Yeah. Uh, so well, I think it was that in conjunction with the other law. Because of the necessary bureaucracy. So, yes. yeah, because of necessary bureaucracy. And, like, we that came out, like, the first or second round. And then the following round, we, we, had, a little, we had a little card that was, like, whatever shield. Bullshit. Yeah, yeah, it was bullshit. We didn't care. And then, fucking, the one that we had to vote on, and you can't abstain from it, was... Checks and balances. <laughs> oh, fuck that card so much. It's uh, basically in the strategy phase. You choose a strategy, and then you give it to somebody else. So that's the four vote. The against was All everyone's strategies rotate one to the clockwise, left. clockwise, and so pass. Only two of them had been used, so a lot of people were, were going to get screwed. Get screwed. And well, two people were going to get screwed. Yes, I was one of the ones that was going to get screwed. And you voted against it. I, I, yeah, because I did not want. I knew what was going to happen, and it's exactly what happens. <laughs> and David was going to flip the table if he yeah. didn't get his. Yeah, because he had tech, and he yeah. really wanted tech, and I was like. And he Sweet. was going to Nick get, was the was like, same thing too. I was yeah. like, I was like, well, I will lose. Uh, like, I I want this to fail because I don't want to deal with everybody picking for everybody else for the rest of the game. Yeah, fuck that. That sounded awful. But I was also like, plus I will get tech if this. So no, I, I really wanted that uh, yeah. to fail. I had I don't I think I had trade or something, and I would have gotten your one that you already used. And yep. I was like, this sucks. For a turn, or it's going to suck the entire game. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone uh, chose suck the whole well, not game. Every, not everyone. They, they won by that. The four vote won by three. Yep. It was a very close election, uh, you yes. know, nomination or whatever. And so, yeah. So then from that point in the game, when... I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and say I'm pretty sure that I will have a hard time. If that comes up and it goes, gets voted for, I will have a hard time just going... You know what? Fuck this game. I'm just gonna. We're leave. done. Yeah. We're all done here. That the other one, the, the other political one, I could definitely be like, f- okay, fine. But that one, I just hated so much. I feel like it, at this point we can invoke the meta argument. Uh-huh. Like if that comes up again, yes. we could be like, we've played with this before, where it gets enacted. It's going to really fuck the game. Everyone yes. here right now, just add two hours to the game. Yep. Because choosing strategies is going to take that much longer. Yes. It, it makes them take longer. And then it make, you can't really, unless you can get a good alliance with somebody in the right turn order, you're not going to be able to get the strategy card that you want to do what you need to do. Yep. Here's so diplomacy. nobody's actually getting to do. And that's what happened. So two things happened in the next turn. So that came out. It got passed. The next turn, diplomacy had two bonus tokens on it. And this was the cause of the first major discussion De- yep <laughs> debate discussion you know disagreement and mm-hmm. views bob chose like third or something yep you know like like yeah you and jeff worked something out where like you gave him what he wanted yeah. he gave you what you wanted and then bob was like oh well i'll take this and the two bonus and then here adrian you can have the worst strategy tile in the game the and most i get two free useless. command counters yep. and that it, the, 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 it basically became a spirit of the law versus like word of the law yeah argument and so, you know, Jeff... The word select versus choose yeah. versus receive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the debate was basically Bob was the one whose turn it was. And per the, the law on the table, he chose... He's supposed to because, choose one and then give it to somebody else. Exactly. And, it, and b- because you chose one... In the rules that say when you choose the strategy... Well, no, it says when you select a strategy, well, which is... So that's where we got into the choose versus select yes. and... It got pedantic. It did. Uh, personally, I think that the intent of it is that if you are getting stuck with the one thing that nobody wants, it gets more attractive. And so whoever's getting stuck with that should be rewarded. Yep. I actually agree with Jeff on no, that No, like one. I said, I... But I, I was in a shit position because I was the one receiving it, so it put me in the... I was incredibly biased. Very few games ever go with the ruling that this did. Mm-hmm. Um where we had finally found a board game geek FAQ thing with the designer it, or it was someone from it was from someone from Fantasy Flight that s- talk about this specific instance yes and they go 
Well, it, it makes people choose those then. <laughs> yeah, but like... Yeah, no, like I said, I agree. Spirit of it, I think it should have gone to Adrian. It's like, I get all the advantages, and you get all the disadvantages. Yep. And there are extremely it's few I didn't want the rule to get in, folks. ...that <laughs> ever use that rule. Yeah. yeah, well, especially because, like, I feel like the intent of the law, even the law that was on the table... Is that but it's a checks, errata, it, It's called it, checks and balances. Like, yeah. and so like when somebody gets to still get all the benefit and none of the negative, that's not a check and yeah. balance. Yes. Exactly. Uh, and uh, in one of the previous erratas, it is bonus tokens always stay with the strategy. Mm-hmm. But because we had found that specific instance of this sp- card, very specific instance, and that's one of the knocks against this game. There are so many specific instances because there's just not enough. It wording that happens with these cards yeah. um, that I conceded to that argument. It yes. took three years for an updated FAQ to adjust what we'll get to in a second. The second big discussion we had, mm-hmm. which uh, you know, I'll touch back on this, but it took them three years to come up with the, to, to address that in the FAQ from Fantasy Flight because it's, and that's not one that's even like an edge case. Like that's an every time this race plays, it could come up. And it still took three years to get addressed, let alone these incredibly rare cases. Like, you have this law with these set of things, this player count to where you end up with bonus tokens, and this all happens. What? Yep. What's the answer? Yeah. <clears throat> it, it is one of the few real big knocks on this game. I, I didn't like that whoever chose it got all the benefit and then just toss the card away to someone else. Yep. Yeah, because again, like, it, I think it defeated not only the intention of the bonus tokens mm-hmm. in the game, yeah, but the checks and balances law and the way that was supposed to work. Like, I think that the yeah, there's an extra the, benefit to choose it, but yeah. I get all of that and fuck yeah. whoever and, gets this. And so we also had to enact the law uh, a couple <laughs> turns later that was uh, basically whoever chose the pol- the assembly strategy would get two uh, two trade goods or a command counter, and so. That just made that one get chosen every time, yep. and every time that uh-huh. one got chosen, we had to do politics twice. Yep, and yep. so that <laughs> so it was a, politics it, happened every. It was turn, a chain reaction. And it was twice as long. Yes, it was a chain reaction of three bad laws and one bad rule implementation that led to this game. That's big part of why this game took eleven and a half hours of total at my house time. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> um, but we were pretty. We were split on. Uh, I think there was... The only one we weren't... Well, we'll just address that when we get to it. Um, Everyone was pretty split on adding more chaos into the game, which (laughs) I can understand. Yes. But I don't feel it is always necessary. There there are different levels of it. Yeah. And that one, like I said, as soon as I saw that one, I was just like... It surprised me because it was pretty well split. Like I feel like the three of us Uh were pretty against that. And Bob and Nick... I'm not surprised no, at all. No, not surprised at all. It's yeah. like, oh yeah, let's totally fuck this game for the for the next eleven hours. The one that shocked me was David, yeah. especially because like he was. It's he because was, it's because tech. He he wanted. He was going to lose and tech, so, and so he was willing instead of getting hurt for one turn to get hurt for eight turns. <laughs> yeah, but I, everyone, I wish I had had six trade goods. I'd be like, David, I'll give you six trade goods so you can still buy a tech. <laughs> <laughs> here's, just, here's money just yeah just vote against it yeah um but that that law changed the whole game mm-hmm. yep. top to bottom yep yeah it, it made it made immediate neighbor partnerships more important because like if i was the first to choose and you know zach's to my left yep. so he's following me so it made it more important for us to have a good relationship so he could be like well if you give me this i will give you that and it takes some trust you mm-hmm. know if you're first player because you could conceivably get fucked. Yeah, I could have. Totally. I could have gave Zach what he wanted, and then he could have gave Jeff what Jeff wanted. Jeff could have given Bob. Bob could have given Nick. Nick I could have given. Give, David, I could give Jeff what you wanted. Yeah, and, and then he, I could have. It could have came all the way around to last, where David, as the last person to choose, gives me one of the two yeah. that's left over. You know, so it, it takes an act of trust, mm-hmm. and you didn't betray that trust. No. You betrayed other trust. <laughs> it was a trust poorly <laughs> placed. Literally, no. Okay, so. Yes, we all like all. F- I I was uh, trade partners with both of you guys. One, Jeff, you had a three, and I had a three. So, yep. I was, oh, well, obviously we're gonna. Yep. <laughs> and then Adrian, like you, said, you had a two, and I'm like, oh, that's that's close enough. I don't think anyone else had a three. No one, no one else had any twos or, no, either. Um, I think Bob might have had one three, but he gave it to Nick. Um, I thought they were one and one. No, oh, maybe I don't know, but yeah, I was just like, okay, I'll do this, and then that way it'll make you less likely to attack me, maybe. Um. 
but it worked. Yeah. Uh, so I know basically when I started, I had my hex, and I was just like, there are basically an, a hex of hexes right in front of me. That's mine. <laughs> I made that. I made that knowledge or that acknowledged early to both of you because you guys are like, what are you guys? You know, Zach, what do you got? I'm like, well, this part here, this is mine. You do whatever you want with anything else, but this, these seven hexes, these are mine, <laughs> including Ish. my own. Yeah, yeah, oh. maybe. There was one of them on the R corner that I feel was not super clear in that. No, I, I, I went, these are mine. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, so so Zach and I were, we'd been trading, we were the two of the strongest trading ones in the yes. game. Um, uh, and I was... First of all, I mean, anybody who's been listening to this podcast since the beginning, anytime we've talked about Twilight Imperium, Zach brings up that he's always allies with me, and then he always betrays me. He's brought it up over and over again. Yeah. And so it was referenced a dozen times throughout this game, like, Zach, I know you're going to betray me. It's going to be sudden. It's going to be inevitable. <laughs> and you know what's funny? I wasn't going to do it until Jeff built that one space dock. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and the thing that kills me the most about that entire situation, so essentially... Uh, I had been getting suspicious. Zach had a couple big war sons right on our yeah. border. Then he moved one of them into Mechtal Rex. And I was like, okay, well, maybe he was just moving along. You know, mm -hmm. I think I think always in those, it reminds me of like Civ Five when you have a bunch of armies amassed along an opponent's border and they send you that thing like, I notice your armies. And you can choose like, yes, let's get this war started or they're just passing through. Right, yeah. And they're never just passing through. Mm -hmm. But I assumed maybe they were. I tell a little bit later on, you swooped in and attacked me there. Yep. Um, the thing that kills me is is if you had discussed it with me, I had a retreat card, a strategic retreat card in my hand. If I'd known you just needed to destroy that space dock, you know, I could have worked out something. Give me a trade good. I'll retreat my troops. There won't even be a combat. It'll be nice and easy and work together. Instead, you smashed my fleet. Mm -hmm. Then you smashed my space dock. Yeah. Um, I, the more... Like I said, I wasn't going to do it. And then, so I had my secret objective. So when I, I completed my preliminary objective, I got two. One was Merciless, which is destroy one of your opponent's last space docks. This is one of the worst. <laughs> yeah. And then the other one was, just, it was, uh, I forget what it was called, but it was basically destroy two different players' space docks in one turn. And I was just like, uh, well, that one might be easier. Yeah. And I wasn't going to do it at all until for Jeff... He was on. He he ended up using his uh, racial tech to get on a mechatol, and he decided to build a space dock there. And he was just like, "I'm gonna force one of you guys to come attack me." And so I was just like, "Well, there's a space dock there, and Adrian has a space dock right next to me. I guess I can complete this." <laughs> and yep. then, yep. Um, well, and it was also because we had this sort of deal on a mercenary that I was supposed to send your way. <laughs> yeah, and so you were down to your last thing, and I kept being like, Zach, are we going to do this? And you're like, yeah, yeah, because I, I was going to give you trade goods out yeah. of it. And then your last your last yep. command counter. Attack. Right on there. Yep. And uh, I had a war sun, and I just destroyed it. You didn't have a war sun. You had war suns. You didn't bring a war sun oh, into I didn't? that battle. Uh -uh. Okay. Well, I brought, I, I brought up enough to wipe the, f the face of that. Actually, no. I, I did have I did my worst sun because yeah. I used my wormhole attack yep. to hit it. Yep. So it had one hit. So it only needed one more hit to kill it. Yep. Unfortunately, I had duranium armor. So after the first combat rounds, it healed itself. Yeah. That that's <laughs> a bullshit attack. Um, it, it took a bit to get to. <laughs> but uh, and then you just happened to roll four hits in your first yep. roll, and my fleet was gone. Yep. And that was that was all. She um. Wrote. Yeah. And you were like super pissed, and you're like, what? And I didn't. You know, it's funny is I didn't even realize. There was a uh, objective of killing three ships up there. I was just like, "Oh, I'm gonna kill the space dock," and then you're like, "Man, if you just, you only needed to kill the three ships, you didn't need to destroy that space dock too." And I'm like, "Oh yeah, there is that point over there, isn't there?" <laughs> yeah. But then I was just like, "I'm sorry, I had to kill it. I had to kill it. It's just what I had to do." <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, so which then immediately, like the next turn, led into our second big disagreement. Yep. Uh, I being the ghost of Creus who can jump around with their space portals. And was suitably pissed at me. <laughs> and was super pissed at Zach. Uh, so the ghost of Creus flagship, which I had recently built, has the ability where it says on its card, uh, the system that it is in contains a wormhole. When moving, the system it is moving to is the one that contains the yes. wormhole. And the way I interpreted that card, and I still think 
kind of no. It's it's not the the FAQ yeah. <laughs> effect, effect or yeah the FAQ without a doubt shut this down. But I still feel that if you're in your home system with a D wormhole, you can activate another system. You can move one space from the D wormhole in your home to the D wormhole in your destination. I so it, but the D wormhole in the activated system still has to be within the movement range of the flagship. Which is one. Well, no, because adjacent wormholes in this game are considered to be adjacent. No, so you I, can move from the, one to another the one across the map. wormhole does not appear there suddenly when you activate it. But it doesn't matter because the, the, no, the FAQ yes. specifically says not only does it not matter whether it's in range or not. It says the flagship cannot use its own dewormhole. Yep, yep. The dewormhole is just bolted to the side of the ship. Yes. For other ships. Which to I had use. made mention of during that argument. So the main the main reason where we were just like no is because um, you know with that with that ruling it technically means that if your home ship was in your, your home, home your system home, you can go system, anywhere on the board. Which is fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> it's super fucked. So that's but it's like a one time use because then once you're that, out there, you're well, out, you're stuck. No, I understand that. It's but like still, you can send and scythe just coming from anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's just the fact that you could go to anybody's home system is that's what's that that was to me like no that can't be right because you can't allow anyone to go to to allow that ship to go to anywhere any home system. I'd and, even be fine with it saying you can't do it in a home system. Because then with my gravity drive, I could just do adjacent to the home system. No. Either way, you're wrong. But it's yeah. But it yeah. doesn't matter. But it led to it because we nobody thought to actually pull up the most recent FAQ. We just looked for a bunch of random threads where people were. Then this is where I was talking about. Like it took three years for them to put this in the FAQ. Yeah, there are three years worth of like vitriolic <laughs> for game yes. seek forum posts about people arguing how that fucking ship works. Yep. Um, but ultimately, but that's mainly the, because of the poor wording on the card. Yes, it is mm-hmm. poorly worded on the card. The like FAQ makes cards, it really yes, simple. Not enough information yep. is put on them because <laughs> they use the stupid they're little card, the tiny card, the tiny FLG. Yeah. So, um, so ultimately, I got overruled. Pretty much, the no, that one, no one was on my side. No, you should just bring a gavel. It made me real mad. I was mad at Zach's. Betrayal, especially because I didn't know I, at the time. It was the only light betrayal. I didn't realize that the destroying the space dock was his objective. Yep. Uh, there because, was no handshakes. Yeah, you know, there there was. Well, because apparently there's well, a rule that I didn't even know that, that if you, you ever reveal it yeah. or even mention. Yeah. You could. I think you could hint at it. You could be like, "Hey, can I destroy? I need to destroy your space dock." As far as I know, if you ever reveal what your secret objective is, yes. But I would say you, that like you can't be like my secret objective so, uh, the is the rule is space not docks. that you lose it, but the the rule is. You may never reveal what, under any circumstance, what your secret objective is. Yeah. Which is like, don't hint at it, don't do anything. Yeah. And I think the house rule was, if you do so, you lose it. Okay. Yeah. See, no, I... Because you were supposed to just never reveal it. I don't know. I thought I saw that it was, yeah, you lose it. You don't get it. It's not like you lose it and you draw another one. Like, yeah. you just, you've lost that. Yep. You don't yeah. get that anymore. I still think that, especially in the the... The spirit of this game that is full of bluffing and deception and double crossing, I don't think if you'd been like, trust me, I just need to destroy a space dock. I don't think that's necessarily in violation of that. Now, if you're like, my secret objective is to destroy two space docks. I just destroyed Jeff's. May I destroy yours? Yeah. You just revealed what it was. You made it very so, clear. Yeah. You lose like, it. So a, g- a good game that ties to like um, the Resistance Avalon, mm-hmm. you can't. You can be like, oh, I'm just a, I'm a good guy. You can't be... I'm the good guy. I'm the I'm the woman who looks sort of like Jonah Hart, Joan of Arc with the helmet and all that stuff. You can't you can't talk specifics about your card. Yeah, yeah. you can say whatever you want, and I could like when I was just you're just like Zach. Why? And I'm just like I just needed to. I just I just needed to kill your space dock, and you I'm just, you die. took it as I just felt like killing your stuff. Yeah, especially because <laughs> I was looking at the I was looking at the destroy three ships yeah. public objective, and I was like, dude, like if you just it's sure like it was like two destroyers and a carrier. It's yep. like. That's not that like that's not that big of a loss. The loss of a space dock is huge. Turns of effort. Yeah. Yep. Um, so so I was immediately frustrated by that, and then the entire table very very harshly shut down my yep 
You're bullshit. Well, it was one of those like, like I did that, and then like it was like everybody was like okay with it, and then somebody was like, wait, that doesn't seem right, and then like as more and more people started to discuss it, everybody just was like. Oh no! Fuck yeah, you, Adrian. No. Yeah. Fuck you. No. Fuck you, ghosts. Yep. And it didn't help that like half the table when I picked ghosts at the start of the game was like, "Oh fuck, ghosts." Yeah, I I was one of those. I know that uh, David was another. David one. was the worst. Yeah. <laughs> Bob was pretty. He he wasn't super thrilled with it, but he was willing yeah. to let it go. Da- yep. David was like, David wanted to hard veto. He wanted to be like, no, there are no ghosts in this game. Mm-hmm. Which is funny because then David and I never once really competed. Yeah. Nor did most people in the game. So, <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so I got I was pretty pissed off between those two turn of events. I was pissed. Yep, I, I was I was mad. I think Zach is the only one that got victory points off of combat. Yeah, and it was that situation where he killed three ships and killed the two. Space David. Stocks. Got the I conquer three planets in one turn by. But that wasn't a fight. You had left it. You you just had yeah. your, your guys I, there, and then and the day was just like yeah, it's open. I might as well. Yeah, I wasn't it paying wasn't attention. Really conquering. No, I wasn't was paying attention, sort of, and I moved everything out. Like yeah. nothing in it. Basically, they just walked system. onto the planet. All you had was a flag there, and just like <laughs> kick <laughs> your flag down, put ours down. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. <laughs> it's the most effort he had. Yeah. So. Uh, and it's really just take control. It's even neutral planets. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, well, it's but like I, I said, a lot of those really objectives are not combat based. Yep. And so it's just like, if I'm fighting, I can't get towards those objectives because it's a race to get points. And yep. so if you don't, if you can't get those points from fighting, then. Yep. So ultimately, as the game kind of went along, uh, we voted a lot. There was a lot of voting. So stuff. many votes. A lot of representatives. <laughs> so the end of the game is approaching. My guys got killed. So I got both my guys got killed. They were very two annoying. of Zach's three got Although assassinated. Although the one that everybody hated, no one killed him again. It was really weird because it would have also knocked me out of the, the uh, voting. There were, for, there were no big contentious bills. That's also true, but I'm surprised no one did that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, well, for it myself. Have, well, for yeah. one, I couldn't. Yes. I could, I could nullify you, which I did once. Yeah. But... For I me, could, like, but, mm-hmm. it wasn't, like, I think that was the big thing is, like, after those first few rounds, there were no more really contentious yeah. po- politic cards. So just so people know, my, my representative, his was, during the bargaining phase, uh, or people can't vote unless they either give me a trade good or they received a promissory note during the bargaining phase. I don't like promissory notes. See, that's what I felt dragged the game on longer and longer. Uh-huh. See, I think. Well, here's here's another problem: is that one of the guys we play with, Nick, is every single time we do any sort of vote, he's always, "Well, I've got these, ones, but I could be va- I could be swayed this Nick way." Nick does yeah. that every time. <laughs> um, Promissory notes. I just use. That's, see, that's why I like the base game. Just use your fucking influence, and that's what you have. Not all of these like and, bullshit. See, I like the promise notes because I like the wheeling and dealing. I like, and then I it. You can wheel and deal without having these weird cards because you can use the trade goods and promises Man, and stuff like that. I like I like them because I find that especially so most of them once you trigger them, once you reveal them and are like, Oh, I'm activating this now, it goes back to the owner and they can use it again to wheel and deal another one. But no They'll, one ever use them the whole game. Well, because nobody ever gives out the ones that you can. The yeah. take all my trade goods. I would, force that, yeah, that vote. one you would probably for my cold dead well, yeah, especially <laughs> as the Which makes them almost null and void anyways. Well, no, so, so for <laughs> that the Hassan, one in, That one in particular. For the Hassan, yeah. it does, but, you know, for somebody who doesn't necessarily, is a race that doesn't have a lot of trade goods, sure, I'll take that. You know, or I'll give you that. And yeah, you can maybe take one or two from me, but it'll be worth it. Like, mm-hmm. if it's a big enough vote that will affect you enough, you go for it. The thing is... But, like, a lot of the stuff that added in the expansion, I didn't get a lot of value out of. All it did, all it did for me was add more length mm-hmm. to the game. I guess I've never played just the base set, so I don't know. That's... Yeah, I don't... For, I mean, just seeing... I Like, the politics... When he didn't have it, it always seemed people would just be like... It was lighter. It was, yeah, it was lighter. And I, yeah. that's the thing I clung on to when I first played, like the first one or two games I played of this. I was like, the politics, I was just like, oh, this is, this is amazing. I love this part so much. Now, 
I have found that there is a limit, and that is if you have to do two every turn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, God, that hurts. It just takes, and that's why I played it, because I liked politics, but I hadn't played with all the bullshit that the expansions add. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, I, so going back to the promissory notes, so the one I do really like is the you only need nine to win. Yes, that was or you my need most one interested less to win. one. Yep. And yeah. that one, in most games we've played, Everybody ends up with one of those, so it actually shortens the game yeah. by one whole victory point. I can which see is that nice. one being useful. Yeah. So I think one thing we we're doing wrong is that I'm pretty sure when we do, when you vote on a, you know, you vote on that next bill or mm-hmm. law, is I'm pretty sure it's just you immediately do a vote on that one. But too. once again, where's Without the text the, that actually says? I know it? exactly. I mean, that's, which, like, no, how and, are we supposed to know that? I agree with that. I think that in the spirit of it, that's the way. It, it's a double session. The representatives you send to that session, it both, is very necessary both bureaucracy. Yep. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much that would have really changed things. Uh, I mean, it might I mean, have a little bit. Yeah. I Well, actually, I do know because it would have shut down the checks and balances because Bob switched his fucking representative, his 14 or 12 yep. vote representative for his eight vote representative, and we lost by three votes. If he yep. kept his fucking representatives in, we mm-hmm. would have won by one vote. Yeah. And that would not have happened, and the game would have been much quicker. <laughs> oh, well. It's just knowledge that we know for the future. Yeah. Um, Shred that card. Yes. Yeah. I don't know about that. And then, so... Burn? Yeah. Burn ev- the card? <laughs> uh, eventually, we got to where... So, I uh, I took over Mechatol Rex from you, mm-hmm. and I saw a lot of people bring I, it... Well, so, first of yeah. all, I fucked up. You well, read- I, I didn't understand my racial tech, which was open a portal to Mechatol Rex. Because and- you used to be a steward of it. They're just like... Because uh, normally there are three fighters and two ground troops. You have to... The, and the card says, like, if it is unoccupied. And I took those being there as an occupying force. Gotcha. But no, it's just... You're just like, hey, we used to run this place. And they're like, all right, cool. See ya. <laughs> so I did it, like, turn six yeah. instead of, like, turn two. Yes. And then it was like everyone was one move away except me. <laughs> that, yeah, that was... That was the, one of the funniest things in the game was out of the six people they're playing, the only person that get, couldn't get to Mechatol Rex was the person who was on it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and you were there with like one ground one force. One ground force. <laughs> yep. And I just spent 10 resources to put that one yeah. ground force. There. <laughs> and then, so I, I took it from you. Yep. And then um, I saw, like I said, I saw a lot of people who were like sort of eyeing it a bit. And so I moved my war son in there. And then all of a sudden everyone's just like, uh, oh, God. Uh, let me just spend a couple turns. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> War Sons fuck shit up. Yep. Yeah. Three dice, tough. three plus. Yes. Um, but I, I mean, the game ended pretty quick after that. You know, like, so ultimately, like, things were kind of coming to a head. Um, I attacked Bob because he was close and well, I had built a bunch of ships so, and I wanted to roll dice because <laughs> fucking no one else did the whole game. Well, so yeah, so that's where it kind of came down to is Bob made it pretty clear, like, oh, I'm going to win at the end of this turn. And I was sitting there looking at the board, and I was like, wait, holy shit, I can win at the end of this turn. Like, I knew I had I had Bob's. I only need nine points to win. I was sitting at, like, seven. Mm-hmm. My secret objective... I think you were sitting at six, and then you took you took that one spot for, that I was sitting that got you one point, and your secret objective was two, right? No. I was only one? It was... Yeah, so the, that one put me to ten, which is... So I would have won either way, but I actually made it to ten. So Bob's... Promissory note ended up meaning nothing for me. Oh, okay. Your, just taking that from you gave me time. But so I was looking and I was like, wait, I've got like four actions left. There's three open spots and one battle. And then I will control from my secret objective. I now control six spots outside of my home mm-hmm. system. And what really was key there is when I first read it, like, because it said I control a system when I own all the planets in that system. And I was like, wait does it have to have planets? And I looked it up. No, like, you don't. No. no. If, it, if there's no planets, you just need a ship there. Yep. You don't, it, it could be anything, a destroyer. And so I was like, wait. So Bob was all like, oh, I'm going to win this turn. The game's going to be over after this turn. And I was like, wait, I can win this turn. Nobody, nobody really knows, but I could win this turn. And so then I was like, Jeff, Bob's going to win this turn, man. Like, you're right adjacent to him. Look at mm-hmm. your big fleets. If you take that right there, he loses two points. He, there's no way he can win. But it doesn't matter because I didn't have any ground forces to take over whatever <laughs> the actual yeah, points I were because yeah. I had built all space and no ground. Yeah. So, uh, one thing I found funny too is that uh, for me, when I completed my secret objective, I got my next two. One was control 
every space that has a wormhole in it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fuck that in this game. Yep. And then the other one was control someone's home planet. And I was just like, fuck you, game. Stop giving me all these bullshit secret objectives. So, there so are some rough ones. I didn't re- so, if you, one of yours it was control everything with a wormhole in it? Yeah. That one, if we play and ghosts are one of the characters in play, we should make sure that one is not in the game. Because that means you have to take my home system. Both of my two home systems have wormholes. So we should take that out with ghosts. Yeah. Or announce very clearly at the beginning, like, this card does not include the ghosts to D-wormholes. Right. D wormholes. Yes. Because otherwise, fuck that, mm-hmm. man. Like it, That's why we get two choices. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, so, so Jeff went all out against Bob. Uh, I had the only major combat over the whole game. Mm-hmm. Zach and I had a decent one uh, eh. when Zach betrayed me because I had some cards that kind of well, almost made it interesting. It didn't. I had a war son, so no. It was not yeah. going <laughs> to. It was uninteresting from one side, at least. <laughs> <laughs> if, I had, if I had rolled a couple hits, it, then it would have well, been much different. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. it's um, There weren't any galactic battles. That, no. The, the, Nick the, and... David, did they fight the whole any time in no, the whole no, game? No, they were completely in cahoots. They had yep. huge gray blobs and orange blobs yep. that did nothing the whole game. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, Supposedly, uh, David said, because I had gotten so pissed off the turn before, there was a space that uh, me and him had agreed to that got me my preliminary objective, mm-hmm. and I was supposed to move out of it, and I and it was supposed to be that turn, and then I was like, oh, wait, I can win, but it involves me not leaving that yep. space. And I and I delayed as long as I could to see if he would take that mm-hmm. or force me out. Supposedly, he says he thought about it, but he didn't because I was pissed off earlier and he didn't want to piss me off more. Which, I mean, if he did that, then... We wouldn't, wouldn't probably not have won. Well, well, yeah, I, I wouldn't have won that turn. Bob, Bob would have won. Bob won. won. <laughs> yep. The game still would have ended. But, I mean, just because I get mad when I get betrayed and then I get overridden on a rule. You know, well, no, don't. So, we've, we have definitely played games where... Once somebody like if somebody gets either unfairly or fair, like, you know, fair, like if they just for whatever reason, they've just gotten destroyed either from the game or from other people, then uh, it can definitely sort of sour of sour the atmosphere of the game. Yes. And that's what happened on this. Then, so we talked about in the, in the yeah. actual episode earlier today mm-hmm. when we we're talking about this. It, I won, but it wasn't a satisfying win. Yeah. I was not happy with this win mm-hmm. at all. I, it wasn't one where I was like, oh, fuck yeah, I won. It was like, oh, well, I guess I win. Yeah. Uh, we've had one game, literally, uh, uh, a guy kicked us out of his house. God, that was the worst. <laughs> it was. Um, that guy was such a piece of... Yep. Yeah, whatever. I'm not going to talk about it about an actual yeah. person. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, so like I said, emotions are always high in this Bob's game. not a real person. <laughs> it was not Bob. It was not it Bob. It was not no. Bob. Although it was technically the guy kicked Bob out of the house, and Bob was just like, well, it's my game. And I'm so. not leaving yeah. without it. So uh, David's wife, Taylor. Yep. Or ex-wife. Yes, ex-wife now. Or whatever. You can cut that out. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, so Someone got hit, hit in the face with a piece. <sighs> yep. Uh, a because he slammed his fist. Yeah, he smacked down in a piece, ricocheted off his hand right into her face. Yep. Uh, mm. That was also the game where the person blew up early or got screwed early and was like, I'm leaving. Yep. And then a couple turns later, there was a big kerfuffle. And yeah, <laughs> Bob, get well, the fuck out of my house. And Bob was like, well, this is my game. Yeah. So, so it, was, it was also one of the problems was is that uh, we've had we've twice we've played it while football was going on. OK. N- never doing that again. Yeah. No distractions. No, no distractions. distractions. So. <laughs> She's not here right now. <laughs> um, yeah, so so this it it is it's a, it it definitely wasn't our best game. This uh-huh. one no. that we played. So I attacked Bob a bunch. Yeah. Oh, nothing this really. particular game. No, I sorry, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I attacked Bob a bunch. Nothing really happened. I threw dice. Yeah. I had fun actually doing combat mm-hmm. because combat I enjoy in this game, even gotcha. though it's not always beneficial. Yeah. Uh, but I had built up a bit enough of fleets and stuff. There was actually one game where me and Adrian were just like, we well, know what? Out. Yeah, we're gonna fucking fight. Because, yeah. you know, fuck, fuck trying to win, we want to do it, and we did not do it at all, because we were just like, 
but we could win if we didn't do that. We've <laughs> <laughs> Bob got so mad at us because we, we were talking about, we were at talking about yeah. yeah. Like, like everybody ignored us because they thought we were going to build up and have this epic yep. fight, and then we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what everyone did in this game yes. too. So, um, well, it's like well, I said, be- a lot of the games that we've played, there it's usually light on fighting. Yeah. So I, I think it was at like five or six points at the end. Yeah. So I, it has always been in the back of my mind, and I feel I don't know if I want to reveal this uh-huh. to you guys as I might okay. play with you in the future, but hopefully you'll forget. But it's always in the back of my mind in these games that if it looks like if somebody gets like eight points, especially since we play with the promissory notes, where. I pretty much assume anybody's going to win at nine. Yeah. If you get to eight, you're going to win at nine in my book, unless you have no promissory notes. Uh-huh. But I'm like, all right, well, the game's probably going to end in a turn or two. And I, if I'm down at like four or five, and I don't have a chance to get 10 points, you yeah. know, five points in one turn to get, get to 10, then I'm just like, I'm just going to be like, well, my entire turn is going to be combat. Sorry, neighbors, you're not going to win because I'm yep. just throwing every, I'm just going down in a blaze of glory. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, that hasn't come up though like most of these games are tight like right down at the last turn like i'm sure david on that last turn was like i bet i i don't know exactly what his objectives his secret objectives were but i wouldn't be surprised if david and nick and you know i don't know about you guys you can you can weigh in here in a second but david and nick bob was like oh i'm gonna win i wouldn't be surprised if david or nick were both like well if this goes my way i could win yep uh so for me i had seven points so i was tied with bob for the lead um my as I told you, my two secret objectives were bullshit. Um, and I was like, well, I could get one point because I held Mechatol Rex. And I'm like, so I can get eight points. That's all I can do right now. Because um, everyone that had the, uh, the artifacts were too far. I couldn't get to them uh, in time. And so when you got it, like Bob spot it, and I was just like, I can't win this turn. That sucks. And yeah. And unfortunately, I had activated Mechatol Rex really early on so i was like i can't attack bob or anything now <laughs> yeah so so you were on seven you said i was on seven yeah. you ended up taking uh, yes. my point because i was which brought at, me down to six so i was ended up at seven yeah so i was at six my secret objective was to control six things outside yeah. of my home system which was worth two uh there was a preliminary objective for i now spend nine influence and that ten. last round ten. ten influence that last round there was no um, leadership or whatever yeah. the one where you can buy leadership, tokens yeah. for influence so I never used my influence I, I don't think there was a politics that round so there was nothing that used influence that round so I had all my influence no I think there was a one but you had almost all yours out so you that's didn't do what it, it was yeah. I had all of my command tokens except for one and I was like well I'm not spending any for that uh, especially because I had my eye on that yeah. card and then I was like wait I can accomplish this and that is three I'm at six I'm at mm-hmm. nine I have this promissory note that makes it good and then as I was looking where I was going to attack before, I realized that you only had the one ship and it was on that extra bonus point yep. planet. And I was like, all right, well, sweet. And I took that, got my secret objective and turned in 10 to end up to or turn in 10 influence to get that victory point. I ended at 10 points. Bob ended at 10 points. And that was the last like minor disagreement because We've always just kind of been like, all right, well, we essentially tied whatever. And especially in that game, well, usually, I wasn't. Usually we didn't have two people with the same amount in the same turn. And this so. is also true. Uh, but I, and then, It was I, usually like someone got 10, but then someone got 11. You also clearly hadn't had someone that played by the actual end rules. Well, yeah, <laughs> this is true. Well, and, no, like I said, so uh, I think part of, yeah, part of it is that I know, uh, I know Bob is very, like, one of the reasons he hates cribbage is that it's because whoever gets to 121 first just wins. Yeah. yeah. It's not because it's a race. And so I think it's like, I think it's the fact that like everyone finishes the round out and then whoever has the most points win. I think that's, I think that's what yeah. uh, it was. I mean, I can understand both sides yes. of that depending on what game we're playing. Um, but I, did, I wasn't keen to fight for like, oh, I won. Like I was yeah. fine with being like, oh, we tied. Because like I said, this game was not tied. <laughs> I got really mad earlier. David supposedly lightened up on me after that, which probably, you know, if he hadn't, if he had actually attacked that space, yep. I couldn't have won. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I might have because I still probably could have gotten nine. Um, nah, I would have been at eight because I, I had to get my secret one to get to. Yeah. But the whole thing and with the bullshit poli- political mm-hmm. things like this whole game and by the end of it, I just didn't care. I just wanted the game to be done. No, yeah, I understand that. Um, and like one thing that I, um, I'll sort of mention too is that like with combat and stuff, when, you know, when I look and I, I try and uh, 
what the fuck am I trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> um, the reason why I tend not to do combat, like I said, is because I'm always trying to figure out what's the best strategy. Because like the entire time on that last turn, I was just like, fuck, I should have just kept just fucking over Adrian because then he never would have gotten this. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, then, and then I was just like, I was I, like, that's when I said like at the end, I, like I was sort of a little pissed off. And then David started talking and I'm like, okay, well. I'm just gonna. I'm, I feel better now, so I'm good. Now, so. Well, yeah, and so that was one of those things. Like, like I wanted to try and win if I could, yes. especially because I didn't want Bob to win. Yeah. I'll be honest. In this one, Bob, Bob had pissed me off earlier in the game, even giving you diplomacy, to giving me diplomacy with that whole kerfuffle about who gets the bonus things. Um, and so I really didn't want Bob to win. And so I was like, well, I have a chance to win here. I'm gonna go for it. But I also was like, I was counting around the table, like who has command counters. Like I don't want to tip. That yeah. I'm no, obviously that. Yeah. trying to take a bunch of like territory right now because somebody, I, you know, I don't know what everybody remembers from previous games about secret objectives. Maybe somebody else is like, wait, there's a secret objective for controlling six territories. You know, like Innis, you know, we were talking about like, like you were like, oh yeah, we were all well aware that I was at five with my bonus tile. If you get one more, he's going to win. And then you saw like, oh wait, he can take two this turn. He's probably going to win. Yep. Like I didn't want to tip that. And so I was like watching. I was like, all right, well, Zach's out of command counters. Jeff's out of command counters. Bob's out of command counters. Nick has one command counter. David has one command counter. I've got two or three. Maybe we can make this work. That's, that's one thing I've never understood with that game. Every time I finish the game, I look and everybody has like five more command counters than me on the board. I'm like, where the fuck do you guys keep getting all these? That was me in like round two. I looked around at the table and I was like, I've got, I've got my three fleet supply and nothing left. And you guys are like four fleet supply Two strategy and one command. You like where are you getting this? Yeah. Not and having to spend them on tech helps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ouch. Yep. You're getting actually, actually having the influence to use the uh, the strategy tile there where you can buy to them. a turn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Three a turn if you have enough. If yeah. you have Mechatorex. That's always nice and just like yeah. oh, oh sweet. God. Boop. Three. Thank you. I got to use that once. I got to use it <laughs> once. Yeah. So um, but yeah, so it was a uh, epic schlog, as yep. Twilight Imperium always is. But it, but like I said, it's not my favorite one that we've played. No, um, those I still enjoyed myself, but it was also just so tiring and annoying, exhausting, exhausting. Also, another great word for that. It was exhausting. Yep. Um, more exhausting than the game normally is. I've <laughs> mellowed with a day of rest. Uh-huh. You know, it was one of those things that, like, I, it was after I got overruled on that rule, and I was yes. really sour that I was like, you know what? I don't think I'm going to play this game anymore. Uh huh. And at the end of the game, after I won, Nick was like, hey, so, Adrian, I hope that because you won, this has changed your mind about playing again. And mm-hmm. I was like, I'm not sure that it has. After a day of rest, well, yeah, I've, two days of rest, a little bit of mellowing and thinking on things, like, it... And it often feels like this. And the, the, the other victory of mine, this is my second for sure victory. I may have won three, but I've won at least one other one. Mm-hmm. And that one I remember I was like, I was ecstatic. Like it was a big push, a final victory, yeah. clear win. There was no shenanigans of, a, oh, you were upset earlier, so I didn't attack you this turn, or I took it easy on you. There was none of that nonsense. It felt like a good, clean win. Right. That was the, one of the few times where I've been like, fuck yeah, let's play again. Otherwise, all of the rest of them have been like, God, I'm so glad this is over. I wasn't close to winning. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I'm, I need a break. I'm done with this for a few months. And this one was more along those, those lines. Like, I'm not in a hurry to play this again. Yeah. I'm sorry to the handful of our other friends who love this game and want to play it also. And they're always like, wait, you guys played? I wanted to play. So, well, sorry, guys. I, mm-hmm. We're not going to play again. for. I'm not going to play again for like six months. <laughs> So, Jeff, this is the first time playing with our group. Are you going to play with our group again? <laughs> well, that's a long pause. <sighs> I don't like how people are like, oh, yeah, let's totally fuck this game over. And well, I, that's yeah, not how I like playing games. It's not. I think it, for that one, it was they were too focused on the, the short term benefit. Yeah. yeah. So it's because it was, yeah, it's because it was too fucky either way. Yeah. They were just like, well, I get fucked over later or fucked over now. I'd rather be fucked over later. So, yeah. I mean, that's, but a, all of, that's but a human it trait. It seemed like a multiple decisions always came to what's going to fuck everyone the most. Uh huh. 
There, there were a, like the production one. There we were didn't a mention. Couple. Oh God, that's right. Oh, that one sucked. Well, yeah. wait, that limited everyone to two production. Two production. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That one at the end. That of the was game. The, the It end. was at the end of the yeah. game, but like, it did, yeah, so it didn't actually have a really big effect. You know, and then that is actually, I would say it did because then I would have been able to build a much greater force to hopefully protect my area. <laughs> Well, but yeah, I, I it was it came up in that politics, so it, the it, it the game ended the same round that came out. I thought uh, I think four was out, and I was gonna I don't yeah, know. I anyway, don't. it doesn't matter. Like I said, it, yeah, this was the worst for that. Like, it was like there has always been, and there and uh, I'm changing not, up the game is always interesting, but doing it to the detriment of the game in general mm-hmm. and everyone's enjoyment. Yeah. which I felt that was what was happening. I I definitely I think oh, some sorry. people underestimated how much it would negatively affect the game. They thought it would throw in a little bit of like craziness. Like so like so I I still think that the immediately vote on a, poli- a second politic thing. I still think that's actually I think that's an interesting mechanic. I yeah. do- Unfortunately, in this game it led to a couple different policies that we had no choice but to vote on. Yes. Because the rules say if everybody abstains, the speaker chooses. Like the speaker breaks ties. If I- everybody abstains, it's a tie, the speaker chooses. I think that would be, if we ever did play with that car again, it would definitely need to be a house rule of, on that second one, because we, we no one... Everybody can veto it. Yeah. There, and, or I mean, everyone, can, everyone can abstain, just so... Because none of us wanted it to happen. Yeah. Well, I think it should be a... There's the, you can vote yay, you can vote nay, uh-huh. you can abstain, yeah. like normal, or you can veto. And if everybody vetoes, or ma- even majority, I'd be fine with saying a majority, if we're playing a... Six player game, if four or more people veto, we discard that one and draw a new one. I don't think that would take that much more time. And that way we still will keep in spirit yeah. of the, the previous card that we solve two every turn. But that way we can get out of ones that will fuck the game. We had some real fucky cards. We did. Yes. The cards, the political cards were kind of horseshit in this game. Yeah. And there are Although so one many, of them there wasn't. are so many cards. Yeah. One of them, our favorite one in the game, came out and actually was beneficial. <laughs> yes. So we'll have you have you ever played that with that one before? The Which ancient one? weapon. Ancient weapon. So basically, it's a law. Oh, yes. Oh. yes, yes, yes. It's, I have uh, seen that one. Yeah, it's uh, basically. Hey guys, we found this ancient weapon on Mechatol Rex. Do you like, want to turn yeah, it on? I think it was just ancient technology. Well, I, yeah. I, I, yeah, but um, so you got a 50-50 chance. Yeah. So if you if you vote for it, then you roll a die on a six through ten. Hey, everyone gets two techs. Awesome. It's ancient technology that was actually great for us. Sweet. Um, if you roll a one through five, uh, Mechatol Rex blows up <laughs> anybody who has any ships on there. They are all destroyed. And then every system adjacent to it takes three hits on a, uh, five, five plus. plus. Yeah. So, so like a 50, fi- three yeah. hits of 50, 50 on your fleets. Yeah. The first time we ever saw that card, um, Nick was on Mechatol Rex with a huge force. Uh-huh. He also had two adjacent systems. Uh-huh. Uh, I had one, out. Bob had one. And then when we saw that, we're just like everyone, even me and Bob were like, yeah, totally. Nick, of course, was like, no, fuck that. And then we rolled a two. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Um, and I don't care if I have every I have every single one of my forces all around Mechatol Rex. Uh-huh. I'm still going to vote for it. One, I just love that card. Yeah. Because everyone gets great texts or something hilarious happens. <laughs> something hilarious. And it's funny. It's like, it's like that broke something in Nick. Because every single, like now he is 100% in favor of that card and just anything that throws a wild curveball into yeah. this game. So it's like, is this going to totally fuck up the whole game? Yeah. Yes. Um, but I, I was going to say, Adrian, I do think um, there should be some sort of meta veto sort of thing where you, everyone's just like, we've played with this. This is a bad This, this is, is a, a bad, bad one. This is a bad card. I do not want to play it. This is bad. Yes. I, I think there should be, for regular politic things, well, I mean, normally you choose which ones to vote on. Yes. But if we ever end up again with the necessary bureaucracy, which I think is a cool card, uh-huh. there should either be the meta veto of, we've all played this before, this is bullshit, just cut it out. Or, like I said, people can vote yay, nay, abstain, or veto. Mm-hmm. And if there's a majority veto, that card goes away and is never uh, seen again. I mean, to enhance that rule everyone does a quick veto vote before we yay nay yeah yeah i can see that yeah yeah i guess that makes so sense I, I just, let's do a veto vote and then we actually vote yeah no that makes sense so cool. yeah um it's just written it is it has been said we have we only have drywall we can put that in yes no actual stone yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Got tile floors. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, Jeff, would you play with us again? I mean, yeah, it's a okay. good game. I, right. I, I I don't hate it. I just hated <laughs> things that happened in the game. Yes. We also we, we have and a, every game is so different. You can't say that. We like, okay. have if a that large, same shit happen again. No, fuck that and fuck right. you. We, we have a large <laughs> enough group to draw from too. There's no guarantee that it would be the same five that you well, played. Especially with because you wait. Okay, so is your copy in Chicago? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, it will no, I can get it. it okay. Will, it no, will. don't worry. Okay. Do, do you have both expansions? Yes. Yeah, okay. so, All right. so, we, so then we actually have two copies too. So yeah. that was always one problem too. Is like everyone wants to play at once, and then we're like, oh, we only have this, and we don't want to play yeah. with eight or seven. So yeah, and yep. then it always gets it like, and, and I'm sure I know there's enough of our friends who listen to this podcast. I'm sure somebody's going to be like, you guys play Twilight Imperium without me? Yeah. I was like, well, we were going to limit to five, and then Nick specifically messaged me and was like, mm-hmm. dude. Is there room? And there's there wasn't not room, <laughs> so so I wasn't gonna be like, yeah, we're full. Yeah, you know, and and I, and I like playing with Nick because he is a wild card. Yeah, uh, he cut the brakes. He did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, and I and I like how into the game Nick gets. That's one of my favorite. Yes. Oh, yeah, playing with he Nick was about this the one. most passionate about this game. Yep. And so I will I will always although, be happy to play with. Although Nick. at the end. When we were gaming, he's like, "Yeah, we should play a game where that just is a rule." And all of us were immediate, like, "The, the no, 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 fuck you, Nick." <laughs> took him out back and hung him on the tree. <laughs> that apple tree can barely hold up apples. <laughs> <laughs> it would not hold up a human yep. being. <laughs> um. <laughs> but, but so you have you have turned to you would I, play, but give it a it, while. I need some time decompression. But I will come back to this game. Okay, I, good. I'm going to keep. If for no other reason than as we have discussed before on this show, I am a masochist at board games. You really I are. I still play I games would, with you, Zach. I, you play two-player games with me, and it's so, just... I would play a smaller oh, player count much sooner. Besides I beat, Race, you, I beat yeah. you at Race yeah, for the Galaxy. Fine. You, we also forgot to talk about that one in the main episode. But yes. So no uh, one cares about it. No I, one would, cares. I would play a much smaller, no expansion version. I would Much be, sooner I than would six be, months. I would be interested to try that. Like maybe have a, you people only played like huge, massive yes, ones? Yes, yes, yeah. Like we I played two, our three, short, four. Our shortest game two. Yeah, two. Yeah. Two? yeah. Does it even play two? The, yes. <laughs> we have played it where we've used every single tile in the, both expansions. <laughs> Like, there's more to Twilight Imperium than epic, massive no. max player games. I don't believe it. Uh, you're lying. Yeah, you're right. They're, you don't have to play with max player. But you still have to have the... Ev- no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, max player, no. Big, well, no, I, the entire cover. time we were playing with that that map, I was like, God, this map is so small. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've played a lot of, like, three- and four-player games, Twilight yeah. Imperium, and they're shorter, <laughs> and you still get as much out of it. <laughs> well, maybe we'll try a three-player podcast game sometime. Maybe. And then no you'll be like, expansions. oh, this game is, like, a game instead of this stressful bullshit the whole time. <laughs> Uh, well bring your copy from chicago and we'll see how that goes so i have handed off my game collection in chicago to one of my friends and then i have a like standing like mail this to me like button that i can press (laughs) at any time nice Uh, i just haven't used it but gotcha i might do that for twilight right on so, holy shit, hour and 15 minutes. Good thing we didn't tie this good at the end. Good thing not tie this into the end of the regular episode. <laughs> oh, my God. That was, a good, that was a good call, Jeff. You're welcome, everyone. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be honest. At this point, at this point, you've already listened through the whole thing. I'm not editing this yeah. separate thing. It's all the motions. There's going to be yes. some ums and ahs and some... And there's going to be a real long pause while Jeff debates about whether he will ever play with us again. <laughs> no, that worked, though. That was good. That was good. So, this one, I, I hope you enjoyed the unedited uncut raw version of our uh, playthrough of Twilight Imperium. I think we should be done now. Yeah. Uh, it's a great game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a, it's, it, it is an, it is an entity unto itself. There is nothing quite like it. Yeah. Everyone should play at least once. Yeah. I don't know about that. If it's your, if you are even, if really you're interested, interested you attempt it. it if you're interested, yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, it is available on Steam. If you've played games like Monopoly and Life, please yeah. buy Twilight Imperium. <laughs> <laughs> play buy both expansions and then play eight player with everything. Yep. First Have game. Fun. <laughs> you set it up and then your head is Have yep. fun. Zach, like you said you played a 24 hour game of Civ. So why not a 48 hour game of Twilight? 
We'll just use two copies, 16 <laughs> players. Yep. We'll set up <laughs> every single oh my God, race. I want, I, every single race. No, well, now I want to. We'll have, <laughs> we'll have four different galaxies. Yep. Now I want to. And then we'll have one on one. Well, what's 16 divided by four? So Four? Yeah, we'll have four <laughs> different four-player teams <laughs> all trying to get to a fifth center galaxy. Yep. No, so, so, this is, so this is so easy. <laughs> So we just well, so and the nice thing is you can actually do that kind of can. bullshit with this game you if you can. really wanted to. Well, yeah, and so we need to just go rent like a storage unit with an electrical yeah. outlet so we can plug in a mm-hmm. light, and then think how interesting they use every. You basically use the eight strategies. You use two copies of them. Yeah. So if like someone takes tech, you can play. You 16, still can take tech, and then but whoever does tech does it at the same time. There's more than sixteen different strategy cards with I all know. the expansions. Yes, and. My, are we blowing uh, your oh mind right now, God. Adrian? I want to right. do this. So I can't one, believe I actually want to do this. So one, one question to. I have is, does anyone know how to tie a noose? Yes, All right. actually. I'll, okay. Wait, no. I We've don't. got knives. No. We can make it work. It's All fine. Right. Let's Wait, load what? that apple tree up. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> um, No, you just said a hard, like, four-hour time limit. At four hours, you shut the storage unit, you lock it, <laughs> but everybody has there. a different key yeah. <laughs> so that nobody can go alter anything, and you just come back 24 hours later, open it up, play another four hours, step away. You just you just got to drag it out. We can do this. It sounds a lot like Campaign for North Africa. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> 1,500 hours later. Ugh. Oh, shit. All right. Well, so that is our uh, most recent playthrough of Twilight Imperium 3rd Edition. For those of you who are brave enough to listen to this shit show, yeah. um, it's a good game. It, it is, it is a good game. I, I can't disagree with that. I enjoy it. It, I hate it, and it, it makes me mad, and it makes me yep. sad, and yep. it makes me happy. And like it makes, I said, the emotions. I feel all of the emotions when I play this game. Yep. So. I tied for last. <laughs> <laughs> What'd I, you get? Five points. Five six. Somewhere. Yeah, I, see, I, I was at six. Had, so yeah. it was, well, like I said, we were yeah. close. So. I one at 10 and Bob second place at 10 and I don't know where anybody else finished besides that so all right well thanks for listening this has been a special Twilight Imperium episode of the Mile High Game Guys board gaming podcast I've been Adrian I'm still with I'm still Zach there we go and I'm Jeff and uh we'll talk to you later yep bye 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 bye